Welcome to the Arcadia Public Library's Community Memory Lab Orientation. Do you have precious memories stored in outdated formats such as 8mm film? How about photos or family documents that are starting to fade away? Then you'll want to learn all about the Community Memory Lab. What is a memory lab? A memory lab is a free do-it-yourself workspace for digitizing photos, documents, video and audio cassette recordings, film slides, negatives, and 8mm film reels. The Community Memory Lab is for you to save and preserve family memories. This orientation will provide you with a basic overview of the technology and information you will need to make use of this do-it-yourself workspace. Before we get started, we want to take a minute to acknowledge our funding. The Community Memory Lab is supported in whole or in part by the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services under the provisions of the Library Services and Technology Act administered in California by the State Librarian. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. What's in the Community Memory Lab? The Memory Lab is comprised of five stations, a video cassette conversion station, audio cassette conversion station, scanner station, eight millimeter film digitization machine, and microfilm reader. The Memory Lab will be capable of working with the following formats, documents, photos, slides, and negatives, Super 8 and 8mm film, audio cassettes, video cassettes, and VHSC, microfilm, and microfiche. Please note we are unable to digitize protected or copyright materials. Other prohibited materials would be damaged items, and by that we mean items that are moldy, have vinegar syndrome, sticky shed syndrome, or physically damaged. As you can imagine, these items would damage our machines. Okay, let's review each individual station. Let's start with the VHS conversion station. The VHS station will digitize VHS or VHSC. It takes a number of items to digitize this format, including an analog to digital converter and a time-based corrector. When you digitize your VHS tape, you will convert it from the original format to an MP4 or .movie file. We use Handbrake to make this conversion. How long will this conversion take? One minute of video will take about 1.5 minutes to complete. So a 60 minute film will take about 90 minutes to digitize. Then once captured, the digitized video will need to be encoded, described, and saved to your hard drive. Please plan accordingly. Here's a step-by-step -step breakdown. Power up the VCR, insert your VHS tape, and rewind if needed. Now you will go to the computer and capture the video. We will do that in Media Express, where you will click the Log and Capture tab. A test signal should appear. Click Capture in Media Express and press Play in the VCR. Just let the video play. When the video capture is over, click Capture one more time. Now we can save the video. For one hour video, you will need a saving device of at least a 100 gigabyte file. We suggest compressing your videos using Handbrake and using these settings. Video resolution, fast 720p30, file format, MP4. And once that is complete, check to make sure the video has saved to your storage device. Then delete the video from the desktop. Now, best practice is to keep your VHS tapes even if you already digitize them. Even if you make an analog and digital copies, keep the original. This will apply to all the formats we covered today. Here are some VCR and VHS preservation tips. Store a VHS vertically. Keep cool and dry. Keep off the floor. And VCRs uh, will deteriorate faster when not used, so periodically use it. Now let's talk about audio. We will be using the Tascam device to digitize audio cassettes. The audio cassette format will be digitized into an MP3 or .wav file. We will be using Audacity to digitize the audio cassettes. Here's how to do that. Power up the device, insert the audio cassette, and open Audacity on the computer. You will then preview the tape and adjust the sound. Rewind to the beginning and play and record in the opposite order actually. First you will record in Audacity and then you'll hit play on the Tascam device. 
Stop both Audacity and the player when complete. And save your file. That's it. Now let's talk about preserving your audio cassettes. Store vertically with the open end up in the case if possible and keep in a cool and dry space. Let's move on to the scanner. Now this is in your at home run of the mill scanner. This is a high quality scanner that can scan photos, documents, including newspapers and everything listed here. You can also scan film and transparency, 35 millimeter slides, photo negatives, and the machine can accommodate large format items up to 12 by 17 inches. As we scan, we convert the documents, photos, etc. into TIFF and PDF files. The length of your visit will depend on how quickly you work, the number of items to be scanned, the formats you are scanning, and the resolution you are scanning at. The higher the resolution, the longer it will take. Here's how to scan. We highly recommend using gloves so you don't transfer fingerprints to the device and help preserve your photos and documents. Clean the scanner surface and the document and place the document face down on the scanner. You can use black cardstock to prevent bleed through when scanning newspapers. Close the scanning bed lid and open Epson Scan 2. This is the software we will use to scan the documents. Connect your external hard drive or USB. These are the scan settings you'll want to use. 300 for documents, 600 for photos, and 1200 for negatives and slides. Now you can edit your image format and the scanner will automatically adjust based on the scan settings. However, we recommend TIFF for images and PDF for documents. Once you are ready, click and preview and adjust the marquee tool as needed. Click on scan and that's it. Now here are some preservation tips for when you take your items home and store them. Regarding documents, store in a cool, dark environment. Archival containers are best and you'll want to keep your newspaper clippings away from other documents. Store your paper documents flat and remove any paper clips, staples, and rubber bands. On to photographs. Store photos in acid-free folders or archival photo sleeves and keep your negatives separate from print materials. We are all guilty of this, but we should avoid albums with colored, magnetic, or sticky self-adhesive pages. As a rule, you want to handle photographs with clean hands or while wearing gloves and store them in a clean, cool, dry place and limit light exposure. Regarding film slides, use archival safe plastic slide pages and place in an acid-free binder or box and never remove them from the mount. These help protect the slides from abrasion. Let's take a minute to talk about metadata. As you go about digitizing and saving these files, you will want to edit your metadata. What is metadata? It's data about data. When and where was the photo taken? Who's in the photo? It might seem obvious now, but will people know that information in 50 years? Now, some of the data is automatically captured and some can be created or edited. Let's give you a present day example. When you take a photo of, on your smartphone, some metadata is automatically captured. You can see here all the information that is saved. Regarding older formats, we will have to edit or add metadata. Some programs allow you to add it to the file and other times you will need to add the information in the file name. For example, we have this photo and on the back, there are some written notes. We would want to save that information both by scanning the back of the image and by adding the notes to the digitized file. Our last station is one of my favorites, the 8mm conversion station. You will start with an 8mm or Super 8 format and after you digitize the film, you will have an MP4 file. This is a standalone converter, so there's no software involved. We've connected the device to a screen for better viewing. Other than that, the device is self-contained. You will save your files on an SD card. 32 gigabytes is a max it will support. We recommend that your film have head and tail lead film. Otherwise, damage is likely to occur. Here's the step-by-step. -step. Power on the device in the screen. Plug in your SD card. It goes in the back of the machine. Using gloves, load your film. Follow the path outlined by the solid line. Close the lid and preview the film. Adjust the film as needed. Begin recording, previewing the film on the screen. Stop recording when complete. Rewind by switching film reels and selecting the rewind option. That's it.
remove your film reel, and eject the SD card. How do you best preserve 8mm and Super 8 film? Here are some tips. Keep them in a cool and dry place. Minimize sunlight exposure. Remove any pieces of plastic or rubber. You might have heard the advice of storing films in the refrigerator or a freezer. That's fine, as long as it's not the same one you store food in. Ideally, it would be at 40 degrees and 40% relative humidity. Avoid plastic bags and airtight containers and use gloves, always handling film by the edges. Let's talk about saving all of these files. You can bring in an external hard drive, a flash drive, we recommend 16 gigabytes or higher. For the 8mm Super 8, you will need an SD card. Okay, so how do you access the memory lab? You will need an Arcadia Public Library card. This orientation is required. And you'll need a signed copy of our agreement on file. The agreement has been linked in the caption. Once that's complete, you can call to make an appointment. To make an appointment, you would call 626-821-5569, and you can make an appointment anytime Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. through 8 p.m., and Friday through Saturday, 10 a.m. through 5 p.m. You can reserve one station per day, anywhere from one to four hours long. Please note, Staff will review the condition of your items, and we do require that users be 14 years or older and bring in their own saving device. Two last things. If your images and videos are pertinent to local Arcadia history, consider donating copies to the Arcadia History Room. In order to do so, please contact our local history librarian at that same appointment number. Lastly, if you have a story to tell, you can also share it with the library. We are interested in collecting video oral histories of Arcadia and Arcadians to keep in our local history collection. Again, contact our local history librarian at 626-821-5569. And that's it. Thank you for your interest in the Community Memory Lab. If this all seems like a lot of information, don't despair. Staff will be available to answer questions. Step-by-step -step guides have been created in both English and Simplified Chinese. And if you're a visual learner, video tutorials have been created as well. Happy digitizing.